Hello everybody, my name is Chelsea. I am an emerging artist based in San Diego, California. And I've been asked a lot recently how I go about ordering and packaging my prints. So I wanted to do a video today to help other emerging artists or those of you who are just now starting to want to make prints of your work. And there are so many different ways to go about prints. It's definitely not one size fits all. It probably took me about all of last year in 2017 to really perfect my print ordering process. But hopefully, if this video works for you, it'll help you breeze through that learning curve and it'll make it a lot less painful. So there are a few different things I wanna go over before we begin. And the first thing is that I primarily work in watercolor and water-based inks on paper. So this video is going to be on paper prints. I am not yet familiar with canvas prints or plaques yet, but I believe the companies I order through do offer those, so this might benefit you to watch. And that leads me to my next item, and that is that I do use a few different print companies. I am not yet at the stage of my art career where I can afford my own printer just yet. So if you're looking to make prints at home, this video is not for you. And the last thing is that I'll be placing the, link to, the links to all the items and the companies I use in the description below. So I think that's it, and let's go ahead and get started. I first want to go over the two kinds of prints I offer, which are photographic prints and G clay prints. It might be hard to tell the difference between the two visually on this video, but I'll do my best to describe their differences. So the photographic prints are a digital file of the original printed on photographic paper. The company I use to order the photographic prints through is iprintfromhome.com, and we'll go over them more in just a little while. There are several different print surfaces you can choose, uh, choose from for the photographic prints. There is glossy, matte, luster, and I believe metallic. But I always go with this luster finish, which is a mix between the gloss and matte surfaces. I'm not sure if you can see this, um, but it has a subtle texture. And this prevents fingerprints and anti-glare. And if you don't know which print surface you want to go for based on the descriptions on the website, you can usually contact most print companies and they will send you a sample kit of the different papers they offer. So I highly recommend that uh, for your first time in making a print order that'll help you decide which paper preference you might have. So onto the G clay prints. The G clay fine art, uh, art prints I get made are a digital file of the original and I choose the Epson premium watercolor paper. And this has the authentic look and feel of high quality watercolor paper. The Somerset Velvet paper is also good, but I found this Epsom Premium watercolor paper a little bit better. And this is archival water-resistant velvet paper made from 100% cotton fiber, and it's also acid-free. I get these prints made through gclaytoday.com. I actually originally used iPrint from Home for all my prints, but I found that G Clay Today charged half the price, and they still produce just as good of quality. If you don't know what G-Clay means, G-Clay is a way of printing the reproductions of the piece using a high quality inkjet printer and with also with high quality inks and high resolution. So it's a combination of you having to make sure the file you are sending to be printed is perfect resolution for printing, usually at 300 DPI, and the company you are printing through is usually or should be using high quality archival inks and paper. Now I will get into some tips about creating the digital file of your piece and then we will go over ordering and packaging. Getting the perfect final image and digital file of your artwork is key to creating good prints. And there are several ways to go about it, but here are a few options. The first option is you can take a picture of your work and edit it in a photo editing software like Photoshop. This is how I create my final images for print. You'll want to take the picture outside in natural daylight unless you have a photography lighting setup to give it the best lighting. A DSLR camera is ideal to get the best quality, but I do know several artists who use their smartphones to take pictures and they can come out just as good. You can also scan your work. This is a popular route to go, but you will need a good scanner and a big enough scanner to do so. I have found that when I've tried to use my basic HP printer scanner, it is way too bright and the quality is not good, which is why I don't do, do it this way. You can also take it to a local FedEx or Kinko's or somewhere that has a high quality scanner. The third option is some local print shops have a setup to take pictures of your artwork, but you might have to be ordering through them and this also might come at an additional fee. As a quick example, here's a time lapse of me preparing a picture of one of my originals for print. 
I crop the image, and if I did sign it before I took the picture, I erase it, as I don't like to have the signature printed. I then go through and erase any marks I might not want on the prints. Most of my work is done without a background on white, so I get the background as white as possible. I then adjust the brightness and color saturation to match the original as close as I can get. Finally, once the final image is complete and the quality is how I want it, I duplicate that final file for as many different size variations of prints as I want to offer, and I make the size adjustments. For example, if I want to order 8x10 prints, I need to make sure that digital file is set to the size 8x10 inches so it is printed with the appropriate proportions. Also, always make sure your files are set to 300 dpi for the best print quality, and you'll want to be sure to title your image with whatever size you set it to so you know what print size that image is set to. I also usually add a 1 4th inch internal white border. I have a separate video on my channel explaining how to do this in Photoshop. Now I will get into some notes on the process of actually ordering the prints, and even if you decide not to use the same company as I do, some of this information might be helpful for you in ordering elsewhere. And one thing I want to start out by saying is you really need to think through how you want to go about which sizes of prints you offer. As of now, I only offer 8x10s, 11x14s, and I get 5x7s for marketing and gift purposes. I have found in not printing my own prints and ordering my prints through another company that managing a lot of different print sizes and keeping track of quantities can get really complicated. I think if you have your own printer, it's probably much easier to offer as many sizes as you want, but this is something you will have to decide for yourself. Now onto the print companies I use. First with iPrint from Home. They are a father-daughter run business based in New York, and I absolutely love their service. They are very personable, have a quick turnaround time, and they have a great online ordering system. I don't want to go over the entire step-by-step -step process of placing an order with them because their system might not always be the same, uh, but here are a few notes. The first thing is I always title my images with the size of the print in front so I can easily see what size I'm ordering from or ordering to make sure the proportions are accurate. So you'll see that this is my 11 by 14 giraffe, my 8 by 10 elephant, and so on. And remember, if you're not sure which print surface you'd like to go with, you can always um, contact them to see if they can send you a paper sample. Let's go ahead and go to the next page here. Oh, and this is something that they've always had since I've been with them. Uh, for any orders over $36 or more, you get free shipping, which is amazing. <laughs> and I hope that this stays. One of the great things about their online ordering system is that it has all the options to select the borders and cropping here. So you'll kind of have to play around with the different um, cropping options, whether, you, uh, whether it works best for you to do the crop to fill or the smart fit. I use a combination of both depending on the, um, the image that I'm using. And you can also add the, the internal borders here. And if you select to do the G Clay Fine Art prints, you can actually add external borders as well. On to gclaytoday.com, you'll notice right when you get to their site that there is this message right here that says, um, well today it actually says something different. It says there is a winter storm warning and that the print orders may be delayed. But usually when you get to their site, this message will say white print borders, yes, please include this in your file before you upload. So unlike iPrint from home where you can use their system to add borders, gclay today does not have that option. I do have a separate video on my channel that explains how to add borders in Photoshop if you would like to include them on your print. A few notes about ordering through gclay today. So as with iPrint from home, I do the same thing where I title the, Im the, the image with the size of the print in front. It's just easier to see that way to make sure that you know what size you are ordering and to make sure that you have the correct proportions. If I select this, the medium or uh, print surface that I select for my prints, uh, for my G Clay prints, is the Epson Premium. But you can go ahead and go to the paper descriptions to see which one you'd like to choose. The other difference with their system is you will need to manually set the width and height of the print you're ordering. So, as this is my 8x10 elephant, it's already set to 8 for the width, so I need to make sure it's set to 10 inches for the height. And once you go to proof and finish, you can actually see that the whole thing is now um, all on the canvas of the print. 
And as I mentioned before, the turnaround time of G clay today definitely takes longer than I print from home, but their G clay prints are half the price. So this is why I choose to use them for these ones. Now onto what I see as a fun part after my print orders arrive is the packaging. As for packaging the photographic prints, I package them all with the 1 8 of an inch acid-free foam backing board and I place them in clear bags for protection and then I usually have my marketing materials in the back. This one only has a business card but I usually include a thank you for your support, please help share the love. Um, sometimes I do a handwritten note and for the G clay prints I usually toss in a how do I take care of my painting or it usually says print. And the foam backing boards I get through ReadyMat and the clear bags I get through clearbags.com. And I generally use the Vistaprint for printing all my marketing materials. Um, I'll place the links for all of these in the description below. Oh, and if it needs to be shipped, I have a couple different types of rigid mailers. I have the white rigid mailers as well as craft ones, which I usually use for my custom pet paintings. And um, I always stamp them up to make them look really cute and to kind of go along with my branding. And of course, the Do Not Bend stickers are very important. As for packaging the G Clay Fine Art Prints, I have two ways. And through all orders done through my Etsy shop, I package them the same as I do the photographic prints with the 1 8 inch of a foam backing board. But for art shows, I like to mat all of my fine art prints. And I actually buy the matte sets in bulk because I not only use them uh, for my prints, but I matte all my custom pet paintings as well. And I generally go through them pretty fast. So I buy the pre-cut acid-free matte kits. Um, they come in packs of 25 through Ready Matte. And they each include the front mat, the backing board, and the clear bag. And I'll do another video on how I go about matting my, my prints. I think that might be pretty useful for you guys as well. So there are a few last things that I want to go over with you guys. I'm sure you probably have questions on. The first is limited versus open edition prints. And as I mentioned before, I'm still an emerging artist and I'm still figuring things out myself. Um, but I did ask this question to another artist who does YouTube tutorials and she is amazing, an amazing resource. I highly recommend subscribing to her. Her name is Ellen Bredeman. And she did actually do a video on this in response to my question that I asked her on limited versus open edition prints and what she recommends. And just so you know, for what I do, I currently with my wildlife series and opening my Etsy shop, I found that it was easiest to only offer open edition prints starting out, so that's all I do at the moment. Um, but I will, I do have plans to make a new series in which I'll only offer limited edition prints, but for the time being, open edition prints are the way that I found that I personally want to go. But this will be something that you'll have to decide for yourself, and I highly recommend watching um, Ellen's uh, video on it. As far as signing prints goes, that is a whole other topic for a different video. And it is something that I'm still experimenting with as an artist. I continuously get different opinions for the best practice on how to go about signing prints. But just so you know what I currently do, I do a couple, a couple different ways. Um, for my Etsy shop, um, for the photographic prints on my Etsy shop, I do not sign them, but I do let them know in the description that they can request me to sign it on the front. For the G Clay Fine Art prints, I do sign the back in pencil, but I do let them know that they can request for me to sign it on the front as well. For art shows, I, do, I also do not have the photographic prints signed on the front, but I do have a case of Sharpie pens that I can use to sign if they want that. For the G Clay Fine Art prints for the art shows, I do sign the G Clay Fine Art prints in watercolor, as below there. They are more expensive, so I think it just looks nicer that way. Um, but like I said, this is something that you're just going to have to do your research on and see what's going to work best for you. And it might take you a while to kind of get it down um, and kind of set a pattern for what you do for your prints. So that is all I have for you guys for now on how I go about my print orders. I really hope this has been helpful for you. Please check out the links and resources in the description below. And let me know if you have any questions. I will do my best to answer them. 
And I really hope that other emerging artists can help each other out with things like this. So I will definitely try and post more videos of things I learned along the way of building my art career. And I really hope it's helpful for you guys as well. So thank you for watching and I hope to be posting another video again soon.